Hey guys, welcome back to Dexter Ranch. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it's Tuesday the 19th of January. And I just wanted to have a little bit of a discussion, or try to start a discussion, I guess, about um, whether to uh, do grass-fed or not, like 100% grass-fed. And uh, get some people's input. If you do 100% uh, grass-fed on your farm, I'd like to hear from you. And if you don't, and you mix grain in there and or other things, um, I'd like to hear from you as well. And um, the reason that this question is, is coming up for me is... Um, as winter, as I've gotten through this winter, well, I'm close to getting through this winter, but through this winter, I've noticed, uh, especially my cows that calved in fall of last year, I've noticed that their body scores, uh, those four, well, three of the four cows that calved fall of last year, I've noticed that their body scores have just not been perfect. And even I've noticed that my bull, his body score has came down a point, maybe two, I don't know. I just noticed that he's, he's not as filled out as what he was during the summer. And I'm not a lifetime beef producer. I didn't grow up on a farm. This is just something that I wanted to do, and so I dove into it, and then here I am. So that's why I'm kind of wanting to reach out and get some people's advice that have maybe had more exposure to this stuff than me. But just to give you a little bit of insight into my mind as to why I'm trying to do this 100% grass-fed, um... It's not just because I want to market grass-fed beef. Uh, although that's that would be great, especially if you can find the right clientele that wants it all the time. Uh, you can charge a little bit more for it. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I would like that side of it, but that's not my only reason. I, I also am considering the cost of grain um, I'm considering the workload that comes along with going out there and taking them grain every single day, which that's a very small part of it, but still it would be a, a task every single evening. And in a situation like right now, uh, it gets dark. I get off work at, which I'm on my second break of the day, if anybody that I work with ends up watching this. Um, I'm on my second break, so it's fine. It's 2.30. We take break at 2.30. But uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so I, I work during the day, and I get off work at 5 o'clock. It gets dark at 5.30. Um, so it's like... Either you just walk straight out the door every single day and start dealing with those chores or, um, I mean, I guess like I could get up and do it in the morning, but I think typically when you're feeding grain, you're doing it twice a day. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But, um, so I'm, I'm looking out for the cost of the grain uh, I'm already buying hay, uh, and I'm giving them mineral tubs, or mineral, I'm giving them dry mineral, and then protein tubs. So that's where we're at today, is just their, their hay, the mineral, and the protein tubs, is what they're, they're going on right now. But... In addition to, you know, being able to market grass-fed beef, 
and trying to lower the the cost uh, through the winter, uh, considering you know there's not a lot of profit coming out of this deal. Uh, really, I, I'm I would be happy with it just making sense on any level financially, just because I enjoy doing it. So as long as it makes sense just a little tiny bit, I'm in. Uh, so, but if you do grain, hay, protein tubs, mineral, uh, right now I'm watering them off of real water, but that's just my issue to work through. That's not something that I can put on the list. But if you do all those things, I feel like you get to a point to where you're, you got a lot of input costs going. Uh, on top of the, like I said, the extra time for the grain to go out there and, and do it either once a day or twice a day. Um, I mean, something has to be included there for your time. So I'm trying to watch the the cost. But the probably the biggest reason why I was trying to do grass-fed was because... When I have somebody come buy a cow from me and that person's looking for a grass-fed animal or their, their goal is to start a grass-fed herd, I want to have the confidence to sell them that animal and when they get home, that animal's going to know what to do to take care of itself. It's not going to be standing there looking at the people like, okay, wh what time do you bring the grain? I'm I'm ready. Whenever you are, just go get the grain and we'll get to eating here. You know, and I feel like there's so many people out there that whenever I was buying, uh, whenever I was putting my herd together, I talked to so many people and I don't remember talking. And I'm not talking like those people are bad or anything. That's why I'm starting to question my method is because I see so many people feeding grain and then I see these few cows that I'm not liking their body score through the winter here and I'm starting to question myself so when I say all these people uh, were feeding grain and the cows that I bought were eating grain before they got here um, but it was a challenge for me to get to the point to where I wasn't feeding grain when I first got them here that was their expectation, so I had to, on some level, wean them off of it. And it was not easy, and it's still, if they hear something in a bucket or anything, it's like, I mean, their ears go up and they're they're ready to go. So, and I'm looking out there because that's where all the cows are. I don't know if you guys can see them or not. They're way out there. I don't know if you can see out there or not, but... I, whenever I'm working during the day, I'm looking out there all the time, watching everybody uh, walk around and just keeping an eye on them. I brought them up here during the winter, and, and they're confined to this barnyard area. Uh, that might be something else you guys could weigh in on, whether or not you allow your cattle to have access to big portions of your land through the winter. I'm sure you guys that have stockpiled grass um, on your pasture, obviously you let them go out there, but I'm talking more to the small farmer, like this is a 20 acre farm. Uh, so there's some stuff out there that they could probably find to eat, but I, I didn't see any reason aside from maybe they'd get a little bit more exercise to let them just have full access to the whole property through the winter. So, and I felt like I could keep a better eye on everybody. Uh, like I said, I had calves in the fall, so the calves were pretty young. I just wanted everybody to be up here. I can look right out the window during the day, keep an eye on everybody, make sure nobody's got a lame foot or whatever. So anyways, I'm getting off topic. But back to the grain-fed, grass-fed debacle. Like I said, my biggest 
and my biggest goal was to be able to confidently sell somebody a cow that wanted to start a grass-fed operation and not be lying to them saying, oh yeah, I'm sure they'll do fine on grass. Yeah, they'll be fine just with grass. Don't worry about it. Because especially in this niche market of Dexter cattle, I think a lot of people are probably going to be shooting for, or at least that's what they're going to be shooting for initially. Maybe like me, if that's where I end up, if I end up giving up on the grass fed thing, maybe there's a lot of people out there that do that. Maybe they try to do grass fed and then they realize that the only way to achieve that perfect body score on grass fed is if you are in an area that where you're just hitting all cylinders on your pasture and you just have an unlimited amount of this perfect grass uh, for your cattle to eat, then and only then can you hit that perfect body score and that keep your cattle looking like uh, magazine cover ready all year round. Um, so, and you know, I'm trying to develop a brand here and I, I did the research and I bought, uh, from my research, um, what I believe to be really good cattle. Uh, but like I said, these, these few that calved in the late fall, I just feel like their body score isn't what it, what it, uh, should be. And... I feel like if I included some grain into their diet that it would help them to digest that grain or that hay a little bit better, utilize a little bit more of the nutrients and, uh, you know, give them those extra one or two points on their body score. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm just like, it's really, like I said, it's just been bugging me this last week or so. And I don't want to give up on the grass-fed thing. At the same time, I don't want to... And plus, I'm trying to start this YouTube channel. I don't want to be out there and have skinny-looking cows. I mean, uh, you know, so I... And they're not, they're not bad. I'm not saying they're, like... Nobody's walking around with all their ribs showing or anything like that. There's just things that I see on them that used to be filled out perfectly, and now... It's not so much, not as good as it used to be. I know that their body score has came down on on at least three of them that calved uh, in fall of last year. So you guys tell me what you think, uh, what your experiences are. If you if you've been able to achieve that perfect body score year round on just grass. Um, tell me about it and tell me what your conditions were. If you're dealing with a situation where you have just an unlimited amount of perfect grass, then tell me that so that I understand where I need to be. Um, I think that I am at a position to where I might need to sell a cow or two. Um... Because until I get all the trees off of my property and I can get some of the grass back. Uh, but for the most part, last summer, there was enough to eat. So I'm not saying that I have the best pastures in the world, but they're definitely not the worst by any means. So, um, yeah, just tell me what you guys think. Um, comment below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Dexter Ranch yet, Subscribe and turn on the notifications so that you'll know when I put a video out. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.